Here's what makes spreadsheets useful. Watch what happens when I type equals A1 plus A2 in this cell. I just typed a mathematical formula, and the spreadsheet app added the value in the A2 to the value in the A1. And that's not all. Watch what happens when I change the value in the A2 from 2 to 3. The app just automatically recalculated based on the formula that I typed earlier, and thus the result is now 4. You're looking at the basis of how I've managed to live alone despite being a loser in terms of work and relationships. By crafting a whole network of automated calculations like what you just saw, I've managed to keep track of my bank account balance and purchases. However, if you're in a position where you don't have a consistent income, this video will likely sound very arrogant from your perspective, and I'm not the right guy to assist in such situations, which is why I strongly suggest changing the channel if you're in such a field. As I suggested on my podcast about work ethic, I've managed to compensate for my social and work-related flaws by using spreadsheets, a calculating method popularized mainly by apps like Microsoft Excel. In principle, you could just subtract your expenses from your net income and call it a day. But in reality, unless you're a survivalist living in a hut in the middle of nowhere, you're going to have so many expenditures here and there that unless you keep collecting receipts and bills and actively monitor your bank account balance, you're not going to know whether you live beyond your means. And yes, even people who earn a lot compared to whatever the medium in your country is can find themselves in hot water. Even though I'm not free of debt either as of making this video, I've kept track of my monthly payments concerning my other expenses and planned things ahead when I've wanted something really bad. This way I've defied the odds and stayed afloat, at least for now. Seriously though, if I didn't have my current benefits that allow me to put money aside, I'd be way more indebted. Anyway, let's set an example of a kind of system that I use to stay on top of things. Obviously this demonstration won't include any of my personal financial numbers, but here's how I approach the thing. If life was perfect, and there were no evolving needs forcing you to compromise occasionally, I'd make a new table like this for every year. As you can probably tell, the goal of this table is to cover every single transaction from the 1st day of January to the 31st day of December. Also, retrospectively speaking, I would put an additional row on the income and expenditure classes to cover situations where a specific transaction can't be tracked down, but for the purpose of this video, it's not that important, so let's move on. Our table also serves as a calendar, which is necessary for planning your spending when you're short on money. Overall, when your costs are close to your net income, avoiding situations like a negative bank account balance will get tricky if you don't know the specifics, such as your payday. Also, keep in mind that I'm not a professional financial advisor or an accountant, but a self-taught artist and a YouTuber sharing what he has learned over the years. In Finland, as far as I know, we always get paid as much as our net income, meaning that all the income taxes are subtracted before we get paid. And as I don't know the practices of other countries, I advise you to look for additional information if you're unsure how things work in your area. So, for the purpose of this video, we'll ignore things like taxation for now. Let's say you want to have a system like this for 2025. For simplicity and general applicability, let's say you're a worker working in a country with credits as the local currency. As 2025 starts, you'll work for a company that pays you exactly 300 credits a week, and the payday is Friday. Also, let's imagine that you only work 5 days a week. As the year starts on Wednesday, you'll only get 180 credits for your first week. Assuming you have no sick leaves and sick days are unpaid, you'll make 1,380 credits in January. This is important for monthly things, such as your rent, which will be 700 credits. Obviously, if your landlord wants their cut no later than the 7th of January, and you have no prior savings to cover the rent, you might be in trouble if you can't get the payment delayed until you have enough money. So, how would you know when you're able to pay the rent in this situation? That's where the row about your bank account balance comes in. The formula on the cells of this row is written so that even if you copy-paste it to a neighboring cell, Google Sheets will keep calculating the sum of the values starting from B13. Again, if we stay unrealistic and assume that you have no other costs than your rent, you couldn't pay your rent until the 17th of January, when you would have made 780 credits working for our unspecified company. Now let's finally add commuting and food to our equation. Unfortunately for car owners and many American viewers, the following won't be realistic, as I live in an area of extensive public transport that I'm used to. However, I'm not confident making assumptions about the finances of car ownership, as I have no personal experience of owning, let alone driving a car. So, in our imaginary universe where this table applies, let's say that you spend four credits a day on travels between home and work with no reason to leave your district on weekends. Your overall travel costs will be 76 credits for January, which would leave you 604 for everything else after rent, if we don't count the days where the account balance is negative. And as always, any form of internet access and telephone subscription will also add to your costs, so let's add them to the equation. For simplicity, let's say that your operator offers unlimited phone and internet access for 30 credits a month, and the monthly payment is on the first day. Now, you have 574 credits for your food in January, if we still keep ignoring the minus days on our bank account balance, which we will address later. And I keep emphasizing the word month, as your monthly income will depend on how many days of that month you'll spend working. 
Finally, let's say that you're like me and want to do your weekly grocery shopping at a mall near your workplace, with the economy of scale keeping prices lower than your local smaller store. You get paid on Fridays, which is also when you buy your weekly groceries from the mall after work. Let's say that the weekly food bill is 50 credits. In this scenario, you'd actually do really well <laughs> if you were somehow paid the whole month's salary as a single payment before all the other transactions. Now let's address the elephant in the room once and for all. While we could theoretically delay our rent payment to 24th January, assuming the landlord is casual enough not to demand penalty interest, we would still have two days of negative balance at the start of the month. And obviously that just won't do, so how do we fix this budget? Well, at this point, my only suggestion is to have money aside before the start of the year. Assuming everything goes according to our budget, our starting balance should be at least 38 credits to keep the account on the plus side. And to avoid having to negotiate with our landlord or getting kicked out of our residence, our starting balance should be at least 628 credits. Overall, my point with this tutorial has not only been about showing how I've managed my own finances, but also about highlighting a serious flaw in the approach of just subtracting expenses from income. On paper, your budget might be fine, but it's not going to help if you have zero credits on your account, as you need to go to work, and getting there costs money. You have to know when you're getting paid, whether you're working or living on welfare, and plan your spending accordingly. Therefore, you can't have zero dollars or euros on your account at the start of the month if you're only going to get paid on the 15th day or later. Sure, it's really not that hard when you put it like this, but in everyday reality, money management is also about knowing your habits and not cutting those Pepsi bottles off your budget unless you're ready to experience withdrawal symptoms. So, in a nutshell, a fancy spreadsheet should only be used as a tool for achieving goals based on a critical assessment of habits, personal values, and local prices. And just in case you still doubt my credibility, I've been doing this for more than a decade. So collecting receipts, or whatever you've been advised to do, is just the beginning. And if it turns out that you live beyond your means, you should never cut on every expense equally, but cut the least valuable expenses entirely before considering whether you should cut on something meaningful. Or at some point, increase your income if you feel you can't downsize your lifestyle. Even debt isn't automatically a bad thing if you know what you're doing. In fact, I'm also guilty of collecting debt for a rapid upgrade from a laptop to a full-fledged entertainment center. When I was planning and buying parts for my PC project a year ago, I knowingly saved money and bought the parts debt-free because I was already concerned about the monthly payments for my earlier purchases. Sure, I could have completed the project faster by borrowing money for that as well, but again, it didn't justify further shrinking my financial elbow room. But that's enough blabbering for now. I hope you liked this dive into the financial expertise of a self-taught YouTuber, and I'll see you next time. So over and out.